Hey guys, welcome back to the Think About It podcast. I'm Misi. I am so excited to have a safe space to speak our truth or to find it. So come on in for however long I have you here or however long I have your ear. Now let's think about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Think About It podcast with your girl, Misi. All right, y'all. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Back, you guys. I want to say this is episode seven. I feel like it's seven. I feel like it's seven. Seven's a good number, okay? So that means it's going to be a good week, okay? Hey, you guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Like I said, welcome back to another episode of the Think About a Podcast with your girl, Nisi. A place where we come to think about it. A place where we come to talk about it. A place where we come to shoot the shit. A place where we come to be like, what? I know you fucking lying. I know that. A place where we come to be like, you know, uh, wait, when that happened? I ain't knew about that. You for real? Child, let's get into it. Come on in, come on in. We are here, all right? Listen, I'm, first off, I smell so good. I don't know why I do this. Like, I literally, y'all, I wear my house smelling like I'm I'm about to go on a good, a, 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 a good date. Okay, because I smell too good, y'all. Listen, I, I don't know why. I, I sprayed my YSL intense on me today, but I smell so good. I love my YSL. My two, my, my three favorite, favorite perfumes, period, is my YSL, of course, YSL, um, YSL intense. Um, I love uh, Carolina Herrera, um, Good Girl. Uh, I love all her fragrance, to be honest with you. And I love Coach Floral. I love Coach Floral, and I love Gucci Floral believe it or not because I really do not like Gucci scents but um I'm going to have to take I'm gonna do the old faithful Mark Jacob Daisy you can't go you can't go wrong with a classic okay and I love me some EDP 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 is I love EDP do not give me anything toilet I do not like it all right y'all so the honey looking good smelling good feeling real good oh y'all let's talk about it because I'm not gonna lie, this week I really was gonna wear a simple hoodie and a um hat today. I promise y'all, I was just gonna do a hoodie and a hat, call it a day. I wasn't even gonna do my hair. I wasn't even gonna do makeup. I was just gonna give it real light. And tell y'all, I went and I um I looked into my I looked in, into the comments on YouTube and somebody was like, uh, you need a shirt or something like that. Go suck out your mother. What's up? Wrong with you? You gonna tell me? Oh, I need clothes, bitch. Then buy it. And when you buy it, oh, I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. But y'all leave me alone and let me let me be what I wanna be. Let me get sexy, okay? I don't get sexy. Like I really, for real, y'all. When I tell y'all, I need a life outside of work, for real. So let me wear my clothes in the motherfucking house and be cute. Stink, right? Um, anyway, so we're back. All right. I typically, y'all, y'all know I pour my, I usually pour my wine ahead of time, but we're going to probably do it a little different. I have my wine and I got my glass. I got a regular circle glass. It's hella big though. If y'all can't, child, if y'all on po podcasts, make sure y'all get on YouTube. The glass is giving huge. Okay. It's giving fishbowl. All right. So I'm definitely going to pour that up. I feel like the color is like changing. I'm sorry if you're on podcast. I'm probably gonna cut all that out anyway, but I feel like my color is changing on video. Y'all, I it, it's it sucks when you are the editor, the creator, the host, you get what I'm saying, the content creator. Like it is beyond me because you gotta make sure everything good, you gotta make sure the mic's good, the light's good, you know what I'm saying, the camera's good. Child, because right now, and I ain't even drank nothing yet, but I don't know if it's me, but I feel like I'm seeing two different colors like I'm seeing a red a blush red yeah I see that <sighs> y'all <laughs> y'all when I tell y'all everything be going so good until I sit my ass in front of this chair I swear to y'all I, I, I already I've tested my microphones way ahead of time today the minute I hit start on these phones here we go with the bullshit but um yeah so let's go ahead y'all and pour up my wine um this is uh, 120. This is my first time actually having this. This is a uh, Savion Blanc. I've seen they had other um 
uh, wines as well in 120. So that's, I think they had Cab. I think they had Pinot Noir as well. But I have the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I didn't get Chardonnay, y'all. I feel like Chardonnay, I ain't gonna lie, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc be getting me lit. But Sauvignon Blanc, I feel like it takes a little, a little longer than the Chard do. Um, so I have, it's 120. I don't know if y'all can see it. If you are not on, um, there we go. If you are not on YouTube, when the do when the episode do drop, just make sure you guys go and check it out. This is my first time, honestly, y'all seen this in the stores. I got this one from Win Dixie today, yesterday. Um, and, and honestly, I tried. I tried a little bit. As you can see, it's open. I actually like it. It's Sauvignon Blanc. Like I said, the bottle, the brand is one twenty. It is a twenty twenty two bottle. Valley Central Chile, Chile. I think it's where it was. Well, not think that's where it was made. Um, it says Santa Rita, and let's see the notes in this. Cause honestly, I felt like I tasted like a pear. Uh, it has a citrus blossom and peach um, taste, fruity and floral as well. It do so. It do taste like I, I don't know why I tasted uh, pear, but. It definitely, definitely do have like a fruity taste to it. So y'all, let's go ahead and pour it up. We can't get nothing started without this. Cheers. And if y'all at home, wherever y'all at, if y'all not at work, if y'all at work, don't put, I ain't gonna tell y'all what not to do and what to do, but don't, y'all don't drink on the job. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> but if y'all at the house chilling, wherever, if y'all at a place, y'all, where y'all can, Pull y'all up something, roll y'all up something, whatever it is. Y'all make sure y'all get into it so we can get into this, okay? So, you ready? Cheers! Clink, clink. All right, y'all. So, now that we got that out of the way. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love. It's definitely giving free. Um, anyway. It is very, very good, y'all. Y'all go ahead and try it. If if you do, if you like wines, if you're trying to get into wines, y'all, because I meet like people, like I've met uh, um, people, you know, like I said, I work in the hospitality industry, and I get uh, questions asked, like, you know, like what do you start off with? And I feel like, to be honest, I would probably start off with like a, a riesling, um, because I feel like riesling isn't, you know, you don't get that that dry taste. Um, at first and i think that's what kind of scare people off or where people where people be like you know i don't really like wines because it's so bitter and i think because a lot of times people just rush into you know the more kind of sores kind of wines but i would start off with like a riesling or a moscato i feel like those two are definitely definitely more dessert wines but once you start those then you kind of get into your sauvignon blanc then you get into your chardonnay and your pinot noir and i feel like cab is like that one thing where you have to really be a pro to actually like cabs because i feel like cab is the, the driest wine um, of them all. I've learned to like cabs. I like cab, y'all, when I'm like probably eating like a steak or something. I wouldn't, I would never just drink a cab and just hang out. It's always white wine for me. I don't know. But if I'm tr like eating a steak or, you know, it depends on like what I'm eating, that kind of, that would make me drink a uh, red wine because I, that's the only time I get to taste like the actual flavor and actually enjoy um, the red wine. Um, but yeah, and then you get into your Bordeaux and you get into all those good stuff. So, but I, I love, I live for a good wine. I love me a good wine. This bottle was not expensive at all. I think this bottle was like $12.99 or something. Chong, I'll take it. And it's honestly, y'all, very, very good. Sabi and Blanc is definitely more on the dry side if you don't know. So if y'all just getting into it, like I said, Riesling, um, Riesling, Moscato, um, rosés as well, or even a white sin. I feel like white sins is definitely a bit more dry as well, but it's definitely sweeter than the shards and the Sauvignon Blanc and the Cab. Um, so yeah, or even a sweet bread blend, a sweet bread blend, you guys, those are definitely good wine starters. Okay. So I got to drink one more. I'm sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. Y'all, let me tell y'all about my week. Okay. Listen, I am not a, I am not a bench watcher. Like I don't have, I don't sit down long enough to sit down and bench watch anything. Okay. And honestly, I think my, the, like the personality type I am or the person I am, period. If I sit down for too long, I'm frustrated because I'm like, why am I sitting? Like I can think about 10,000 other things I can do other than sitting. Y'all. I've been watching y'all. I've been bench watching for the last three days. 
Ozark, right? And I know Ozark has been out for a while because it has four seasons. And I've been hearing so much about it, but I'm like, mm -mm. It, it wasn't given like something I'd be interested in. And I don't remember, but I think Ozark and Power um, kind of came out or like they had episodes kind of dropped around the same time. And I was not watching it. I wasn't giving up power for Ozark because, and y'all know, I feel like I'm one of those persons. <laughs> if you relate, let me know. But I relate more to like, I feel like I relate, you know, I relate because if I see my people, you know, then I'm watching you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I naturally was like, uh, uh power, that's it. So y'all, I don't know why, I don't know why or what got me into, well, I've been hearing for a long time. I've been hearing about Ozark, Ozark, Ozark. And I think I was sitting down one day, y'all, just trying to watch something. No, y'all. I didn't go to sleep, y'all. I was like in and out of sleep, y'all. I... A neighbor was playing music and when I tell y'all I I was up I tossed and turned literally I went to bed probably like one o'clock I tossed and turned I got up at three then I got back up at six and I stayed up because the music was still on y'all so I was just so like ugh, like trying my best y'all and I hate starting my mornings when I'm mad or I'm aggravated or because I feel like not feel that sets my day you know what I'm saying um, and it don't matter how much I try to change my frequency it's like I change it but it's just like I'm at a thin line. If anybody do anything, you step on my toe, that's enough for me to just, you know, get off that frequency. But I hate starting like my days like that. But I was like, you know what, T, before you start, just relax. Just lay down and relax. Find something to watch. And that's what got me into it. Um, Y'all, I love Ozark. I'm on episode, I'm in season three. I'm trying to hurry up because I do, I hate bench watching. I hate sitting down and watching tv i don't know why like an hour 30 minutes to an hour that's enough for me anything over that like i get jittery i need to do something i told y'all that add adhd whatever it is i cannot sit down that long but i've been finding myself like it don't matter where i go if i go in winn dixie i got i mean my airpods in watching um ozark i could be at the gas station and <laughs> like i cannot pump my gas long enough without my phone like watching it so i would literally have my my phone on my window and i'm pumping gas on my airpods like literally watching it it is bad that's why i, I i'm very like i love the fact that i'm aware of, like you know my habits and things that i don't like or things that i probably do like and i just shouldn't have a lot of it because listen three days and when i tell y'all y'all almost ain't got a podcast Girl, y'all almost, y'all almost got, y'all almost got looked over because <laughs> Ozark was like, listen, I am literally in an Ozark rabbit hole and I cannot get out. So once I get that over, y'all, I would be so love the concept of it. I love the movie. I love the, um, I love the whole thing. I literally, <laughs> I love that movie. I can't wait to get over it. Um, then, um, as y'all know, happy belated Valentine's Day. Y'all, my Valentine's was great. My Valentine's was amazing, okay? I can't even hold y'all. Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all. Like, girl, you must have had no. Girl, I ain't got a penny. I ain't got a Dollar Tree Valentine's Day card. Mm -mm. I ain't got a piece of paper, pull out the composition book, uh, I love you on there. I ain't got that. Mm-mm. I ain't get it. It's okay, though. I did get a happy Valentine's Day text, but I'm like, what is that going to do for me? But, um, yeah, my Valentine's Day, honestly, was good. I worked, of course, um, and for me, I love, like, if you, again, if you in the hospitality industry, you a bartender, bitch, I mean, honey, if you a stripper, if you a uh, server, whatever it is, holidays is our days. Holidays is, like, where we come and make our money. I don't know necessarily Valentine's Day as a stripper because, you know, that might be a little shaky. You can't be in the strip <laughs> on Valentine's Day. <laughs> but your ass could be sitting down in somebody's restaurant. And y'all, I make money. It was good for me. I ain't gonna complain. If I'm making money, any holiday, you know what I'm saying? I think for me, what what suffice me, um, like I said, of being single for four years. And even when I was in relationship, uh, and when I was in relationships, I think what sufficed me was when I worked on holidays, when I had to do anything like on special days, I was like, well, that money you making, and I know everything is not about money, I know, but if I can't have one and I got this, then I'm gonna take, I take what I can get. Y'all leave me alone, don't judge me, it is what it is. And I took it, okay? But you know, listen, 
I told y'all, I got a, well, I ain't tell y'all, but I'm a toy girl. Like, I love me some toys. I live for a good toy. Uh, let's just say I need all new batteries. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. So let's go ahead and get into the icebreaker of the week. Y'all, icebreaker of the week is what's the best advice you've been giving in your life? What has What is the best advice you've been giving in your life? And I'm going to say my best advice I've been giving was get that bread, that head, and leave. Bitch, then leave. Get that bread, that head, then leave. <laughs> no, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing, I'm playing for real. Think, think. I'm playing, no, for real, I swear, I'm playing. That is, that is a jokey joke. I'm laughing about it. Um, the best advice I've been given, I've been, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to say the best advice I've been giving, or, but I would say the best advice I've heard. As y'all know, like I said, I listen to a lot of podcast. I mean, a lot of, well, I listen to a lot of podcasts as well, but I listen to a lot of motivational speakers. Um, and one of my favorite person I will forever listen to, I would replay it over and over. I just love his drive. And I know, I know for a fact that what he's speaking is actually who he shows up as. Um, um, so Kobe, Kobe Bryant, I love Kobe. R.I.P. Kobe, I love, and I miss that man so much. You would think I met him. I've never met him before, but I grew up watching Kobe, watching him for some, um, like I said, since he was, like since he first started the league. Um, so if you don't know, he does a lot of motivation. Well, he did a lot of motivational um, speaking and talks and stuff. And one of his uh, talks or his uh, seminars, he goes, his, his quote was, never stop when you're tired, stop at the end. Never stop in the middle, stop at the end. So don't stop when you're doing something. Like even I do that, I think I take that in every aspect of my life. I don't care if I'm cleaning up. I don't care how tired I am. I'm not sitting down until I am done. I'm not gonna, you know, have a glass. Well, I drink my, of course I drink wine while I'm cooking, but I'm not gonna, you know, get into relax mode until I'm done with dessert. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not doing, like until I am done. I don't rest, even like as far as like my work. For me, I'm very, if anybody who's ever worked around me in my entire um, time of being in, in the industry or just anything I quite frankly do, I am, um, like, I'm very dedicated to it. I'm extremely dedicated to my work. I'm extremely dedicated to um, anything that I'm putting my time into. And I'm not going to stop until I am done. I don't care what the triumphs is. I don't care what the, you know, circumstances is. I'm not going to stop until I'm done. I've been that kid, like that person since I was, or um, since I was a kid, where if it was something I was fixed, like I had always this thing where, where I had to like fix, like I like fixing things and making things work again or, I love playing with, which is crazy. I don't advise it to kids. I don't advise it for kids, but I love playing with like wires and technology and figuring how this plug going this way. And you know, and you, if you remember back then, we had like um, jacks like in the back of the TV where you know you have like the yellow, the white, the yellow, white, and yellow, white, and red. Um, and depending on if you know the back of the connectors don't have the colors, you got to play with it to see what go for what. So I always love that. Um, and I'm not going to stop until I figure it out. I'm not going to stop until that TV turn on. And if it, it better just show clear. I don't want to see no crickles. I don't want to see none of that because I'm going to keep playing with it. Um, and I take that, like I say, in every aspect of my life. I do not stop until I am finished. Um, so, Ari, you ready? Are you ready? Is you ready? Whole swap ready. So, you ready. All right. Topic. Topic number one. We got two topics this week. We're going to try to get into it nice, quick, and easy. But you know I am long-winded, so here we go. Topic <laughs> number one of the week is posting your bae without posting your bae. <laughs> posting your bae without posting your bae. How y'all feel about that? Like... Okay. I feel like <laughs> for me, all right? Okay, I feel like the de there's definitely different like circumstances and, you know, reasons why people you know, like how people would like post a picture, right? Or you know, like like Valentine's Day like just went by. I seen 
this whole this one girl she had this in whole entire photo shoot beautiful photo shoot beautiful photo shoot um with her and her um significant other her boo and in every um in every uh photo the guy he was like kind of he kind of like a black panther you can't see him but you know he's there so it's, it's just like a shadow kind of like you can see her her whole body you know her whole sexy look and then she's like kind of like covering his face or his back is like turned around or you know what i'm saying and i, I think it's very creative it's definitely very creative but um, I feel like if you're meaning behind posting it or taking a whole photo shoot, you can't, you know what I'm saying? If it's, if it's not for creative creativity purposes and you really want to take pictures with your babe, but you don't want, you know, the world to see him, then why post the pictures or why take the pictures with him? You know what I'm saying? But I do feel like I said, like I said earlier, there's def definitely different reasons on why people, I feel like post their babe without posting their babe. For instance, like, I feel like if you were a celebrity or you know like you are you know you kind of getting your name around the social media world and you just got into a relationship especially if you just started dating somebody no you know what i'm saying because you just don't want that name or that person attached to it or you know what i'm saying something could happen in your life and but because and then because now you you connected that person to you know to your to to you the world ain't gonna never let that up you get what i'm saying so yeah i feel like yeah you just if you in a the social media world or you're famous or whatever and you know other people is like you know um um obligated to have an outlook on you then yeah let's hold that back you get what i'm saying or like i said if you were a celebrity period and you just don't want because of people you know again having an obligation to have an opinion about your situation you just don't want it up in the air then you just don't say nothing about it you just don't post it period that, that's that's very understandable you know what I'm saying? Or I feel like even if outside of the famous world, outside of the social media or, you know, the celebrity world, and you just started dating, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you just started dating a person and you don't know what the outcome is and, you know, you're naturally like a photo person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like for me, the the, um, the more I get into, like, my content and myself and everything with me, I'm definitely a self person. Like, I'm def not just a self person, but I love to take pictures and content i love content i don't know why i just love creating i'm a creator so that thing like those type of things comes natural so for me like let's just say for me if i'm dating somebody or i just started dating someone or whatever and if i feel like i'm to the point where you know like we vibing or whatever and you know i want to take a picture and we're just starting to date i'm not gonna hold you i'm probably gonna do like a let's say we hold each other hands on the table or wherever we at i'll probably like take a picture of our hands like mm, boom you know kind of like little hints here and there like mm, you know shit like that you know what i'm saying like i <laughs> some of y'all do too fucking much some of y'all will post a nigga like hairline like bitch y'all play too fucking much like girl we know it's a nigga y'all post a nigga chest here quit playing <laughs> like that but yeah i think i do i would definitely do th like do something like that just because of the fact that i don't know you know just you know if something was to go left, you know what I'm saying? Or if it, did, if it didn't work out, at least, like, nobody has, like, an actual face to this person. You get what I'm saying? And now I think I'm so comfortable with myself and I know that I, I know how to date intentionally. If, even if the person, like, let's say, you know, I did a little hand pick or whatever and we don't work out, I'm not going to feel like, oh, yeah, I got to delete, delete this out of my photo. You know what I'm saying? I got to delete this out of my phone because we're not together. You know what I'm saying? I think I've, I've learned how to build healthy relationships and to leave relationships that I know that, you know, it's just not going to suffice or, you know, we're just not a mesh. You get what I'm saying? So for me, if we take a picture, like my, um, the, the first thing I'm not, I'm, you know, it doesn't go through my head, oh, social media seen it. No. Okay. It didn't work out, but we had a good time. He was a sweet person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's what I had to learn when it comes down to you know, the whole dating thing. But as far as, you know, getting back to, like, you know, dating, posting your baby without posting your baby, I feel like those are definitely reasons or grounds to be like, okay, you know, you do a little play play or you just don't post a period. Now, for y'all people who be like, oh, I'm not posting my nigga, you know what I'm saying? I'm not posting them on Facebook. I'm not posting them on Instagram because these hoes, this and this and that. I feel like, girl, <laughs> cut it. If you have to, if you have to, you 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 don't want to post your nigga. You don't want to post your man because 
or what other females gonna think, think or what other females gonna say, that ain't your nigga. True tea. True, true, true squeeze. True, true squeeze. If you can't post your nigga because, oh yeah, other females gonna be in my in inbox about him, then you already know deep down, you already know deep down that that's not your nigga. You already know deep down that he fucking on other people. You know that. You get what I'm saying? And then y'all get on social media. People get, like, you know, some people, females will get on social media and be like, um, I'm never posting my nigga on, you know, on social media um, for these hoes, blah, blah, blah. And then the same, like, when y'all make these posts, the females be in the background like, girl, you not posting it because he fucking me. What is you saying? Quit playing with me. And you know that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, or, like I say, the females, like, you know, the, the one il illustration, like I said, that I seen on Facebook, the picture, the picture, the photo shoot I seen on Facebook. If that, let's just say, I don't know her situation, I don't know her, but let's just say she posts her, she posted her um, pictures the way she did, like the, the whole photo shoot or whatever, because, um, and she posted knowing or feeling like, you know what I'm saying, like she don't want social media in her business or she don't want everybody to know who a man is because she feel like, you know, once people find out, then they gonna come and start telling her all type of extra stuff, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Let me tell you something. Whether it's smoke, there's fire. Whether it's smoke, there's fucking fire. So if somebody coming to you or you worried about what somebody gonna say about you because you post this person, you shouldn't be worried about, that should be the least their worries. What you should be worried about is why you even, why is that your worry? You know what I'm saying? Why are you worried about is somebody else coming to you and telling you something about a nigga that you fucking? Why is that your worry? You know what I'm saying? If anything, it should be like a, a bitch bet not. When I'm posted as a bitch, you bet not. You get what I'm saying? Because then why am I with you? You know what I'm saying? But the first thing we do, we're so quick to defend the man, you know what I'm saying, to make the females look like they're the problem that, you know what I'm saying, all in all actuality, we really low-key be looking fucking dumb. You get what I'm saying? And then sometimes you have females that don't post a nigga because the nigga don't want to be posted. You know what I'm saying? They be like, nah, just get my hat. Just get right here. Take it. You took it? You took it yet? You show? Sure? Don't you let me know before I turn back around. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? And then y'all, like, females, that, that, what really gets me is the females that don't ask questions about that shit. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like, niggas be like, oh, nah, take take it like this, take it like this, take my picture like this. You know what I'm saying? And nigga bitch be like, but you so stupid. <laughs> yeah. No, why do you want your, why do I, why am I taking pictures of your elbows? Your ashy ass elbows are that. You know what I'm saying? Take a picture of this jargon on that shit, but why would I take a picture just of your elbows? Nigga, like, what? What are we doing here? The math ain't math then. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we need to figure out. Period. Like, we be so we be so focused on the wrong shit. Okay? So I feel like I say, post me a baby without posting your baby. Now, now don't get me wrong, because I feel like you, and then you do have females that just feel like, you know what? They're private, they're naturally private people, and they don't want people into their life. Now, with that being said, if you private, <laughs> and you had Tom, Dick, and Harry posted, but all of a sudden today you want to be private, the math just ain't mathing. But maybe you had to learn, you know, sometimes people learn their lesson, like, I done post this person, I done post that person, I done post that person, I don't want nobody else on here, period. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. You know what I'm saying? But people that sit there and be like, oh, I'm just a private person, how are you private and you would have four or five people? Now, if you sit there and say, girl, I'm just trying to, I ain't going to put this out there like that right quick because, you know, I had too many niggas that shit ain't working, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed. That honesty, transparency, I can work with. But the bullshit, I don't have time for it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't have time for it, okay? You know what really irritates me? I'm not going to hold y'all now. I'm not telling y'all to just be posting all y'all business because I'm not going to lie. What, post, what really irritates me? It's the females that post Peter in February. They break up, come back um, April, he, she got John. They break up, come back May, there goes Tom. They broke up, come back June, there goes Nate. They broke up, come back August, there goes Sam. They break up, come back September, there goes Timmy. They break up, come back uh, 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 November, there goes David. Bitch, when do you fucking stop, huh? Mama was a Rolling Stone. Okay, like that type of shit, I don't like that. Like at some point, honey, get that coochie a rest. Slow it down, okay? Um. So yeah, I just feel like, uh, to, to sum this up, I just feel like, a, you know, 
posting your bae without posting your bae, if you have valid reasons on why, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you have people that's naturally a private, per a private person. For me, nigga, you want to be put out there, period. You see all this? Why would I not want to be seen? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would not? And for me, if I'm dating somebody, my man going to be, if he not it to y'all, he going to be it for me. So I want y'all to see him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, catch this. Catch all that love. Like, wait. Like, that's what I would, I would, you know, for me, I don't mind, um, I don't mind my man being out there. I, sh I don't, I, I want us to take pictures. I want people to, you know, see what, you know, what a vibe look like. And if my man is my man, and if you with me, honey, you gonna be a fucking vibe, period. And people gonna see that shit, period. Like, yeah, we gotta give that shit out, babe. We gotta get it out. You know what I'm saying? Give, give hope to other people too, babe. Talk about it. Yeah. So I'm posting my babe. I'm posting my babe. I'm not doing all that, putting a paper bag over his goddamn head, putting a uh, pepperoni over his eye. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. He finna get posted, period. And babe, if you can't be, if you scared of being posted or you don't wanna be posted, you not my baby. You somebody else's baby, 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 because you ain't mine. Period. Okay. So let me know what y'all think about that. Do y'all think that it you do you think that you should post? Should you post your person without person your po posting your person? I'm saying like if y'all, you know how people do post post a little arm over their neck or something. Girl, you know what I'm saying? Like now a little tease, you know, for the first couple of months. Okay, cool. But two, three, four, five, two, two years in, and you y'all still doing these little finger over the eye type shit, stop playing with me. I ain't got time for it. Just take yourself off of social media, period. You know what I'm saying? Delete the internet off your phone. Because what's what's the point? What's the what's the point? Okay. So yeah, my babe, babe, you gonna get posted. Posted. And babe, you better post me up. I'm post up, baby. I say post up. What you talk about? It. Yeah. Okay. So that's just it. So topic number two. Topic number two is we're going to get more, I guess you could say we're going to get more serious. I'm not going to say serious, really, not really serious, but we're going to talk about it. Topic number two is being yourself the older you get. Being, just simply being yourself the older you get. Being you, you in every form, every form. You know what I'm saying? Your goofiness, your wittiness, your funny person, your not so funny person, your serious person. You know what I'm saying? Your purposeful person, your entrepreneurship person, whatever it is, being you, being who you are, being what you really want to do around. It don't matter what room, you know, what room you're in, being you, the older you get. You know what I'm saying? And I, maybe I should rephrase that question. Or uh, maybe it's like, I guess, how hard is it to be yourself the older you get? And the reason why I say that is because, you know, a lot of times people probably feel like, well, what, is, what, how, how that, that don't make sense. I think a lot of times because of life, because of, you know, children, because of marriages, because of, you know what I'm saying, what your family pattern look like or what your generational pattern look like, a lot of times we don't even know, the older we get, we don't even know who we are. And quite frankly, I think it actually um, pulls us, the, the more we get into life, you know what I'm saying? And we're not aware of what we're doing and aware of our steps. The more we get pulled back from who we are, exactly who that person shows up as. You know what I'm saying? Like your likes, your needs, your wants, and so on and so forth. And I think, like I said, a lot of times, mainly, you know, relationships, um, intimate relationships with people um, and family and sometimes, hell, just life can change your whole outlook of who you are and what you are. I think a lot of times people in this world don't even know that. People don't have that answer. Who am I? And I think that was something that I struggled with, like I said, uh, three, four years ago was, you know, that question of who am I? Who am I? And what makes me me, right? Um, and I think the reason why I feel like it's so, the reason why I kind of felt drawn to have this conversation today because as I was listening to Sarah Jakes this morning, um, and the, I just listened to a clip of it, um, and they, she had a lady on that was talking about being vulnerable, um, basically being vulnerable, being you, um, whilst, whilst going through, you know, through life, you get what I'm saying, or going through, you know, the things that you went through in the past and finding hope to, you know, to find more of yourself, if that makes sense. Um, and I think, like I said, because can't stop saying it because of you know because of life because of the stuff that you go through you just naturally just you don't even sometimes a lot of times we just put that shit on the back burner of what we want 
especially when you know you're a single mother when you're a mother period um, and you have kids and you have you know a busy job or a busy schedule or whatever that may be you just get into this routine of what life looks like for you every single day right i get up you brush your teeth you know what i'm saying you cook breakfast for the kids you go to work you get you drop well you drop them off to school you go to work you get home cook and you start it all over again right and i think a lot of times we grow up resenting you know what i'm saying family members resenting your husband your spouse um sometimes resenting your kids because we've been in this notion or we've been in this um this cycle of just life um and i think the first part of it is to to, to honestly get out of that or to actually start to see something is to first be aware of okay i'm not myself i think that was so important for me is realizing especially when i was when i got to that point of really like starting to make changes with myself was I realized how I showed up in the world. I realized that there were things about myself, like I said on, on um, other episodes, that it wasn't becoming of me. You know, it, it not saying that I didn't appreciate it, right? I think that's also important to appreciate every aspect of your life. And because if you don't appreciate it, then how do you move on and understand where, where that, what you probably seen as a problem was actually a help to get you to the next step in your life. So for me, I think, like I said, I got to a point of realizing, for instance, I, like I said, I would walk into every room. I think I said this on other part, on another episode where I would walk into every room and I'm just naturally like, you know what I'm saying? And I, people, I would hear it. It didn't, it would, wouldn't be a day that go by where I, I didn't hear smile. Mama, you can smile. You got a pretty smile. You know that? Or you so pretty when you smile. And I took offense to that too. Cause I'm like, y'all keep asking me to smile for like bitch like it's nothing so happy to be smiling for every second like what you want me to do just walk around like this all goddamn day like that's really dumb like no i'm not gonna, I'm gonna walk around smiling all day so the first thing i did was i took that and i made i turned that into a negative a negative thing because i hate y'all when i'm talking and i cannot find the words just just to let y'all know because i literally be editing my stuff and i'm like and i'll be saying the words i'm looking for and i'm like bro where, where, was, where, where was you at when i needed you babe um <laughs> yeah but i think um a lot of times you know like i said when you're when you're trying to find yourself or when you're 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 in a state of being when you're trying to find yourself or when you are when you don't know who you are or when you are um going through this process of life you don't take the time to step to step back and be like you know what Hmm. You know, you don't do that. Hmm. Because like I said, for me, me walking into every room and just me mugging. I always, when every room I walked into, it was just like, like I said, I always turned it into something negative. Um, and that, but, but that was my, that was my outlook. That was the room that I had. That was you telling, and, and I think because like I said to you, you're going through it. A lot of times too, you know, what I've learned is, is we try to find our answers whilst we're going through the process. You cannot find your answers while you are going through it. You're still in the water. You still go, you still have your highs, you still have your lows, you still got the shallow parts, you know what I'm saying? You still have those parts and in order for you to actually see and to sometimes understand how you got through those waters, you have to wait until you're at the end of it. But before you get to the end of it, you have to, of course, get to the acknowledging, acknowledging part of it. Um, now I, I that's why I learned, you know what I'm saying, why it is so important and you know those AA meetings where people be like, you know, the first thing is awareness and you know, you admitting that you have a problem. So that's why they start off with, you know, hi, my name is so and so and I have this issue, I have that issue. It's just being aware. Simply being aware. And I think I had to get to a point, like I said, for me, I I I knew that there were things about myself that I didn't like, right? Um, and I had to be honest with it. And so, like I said, the, f the first part was me walking around and me just naturally having this like me mug, right? But like I said, I grew up in the service industry. So when I'm working, um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I feel like loved. I, I'm, I'm, def I'm definitely loved in my industry for what my guests. I'm, I'm loved. I am loved by my guests. You know, I can probably name, even up to the day, it's been 18 years that I've been in the industry now, and I can name on probably one of my hands, on 
the bad um, outlook or the bad experiences, experiences I have with my guests, you know what I'm saying? Or probably experiences that they even have with me. But I love my guests, my guest loves me. And even when I was in those place of, you know, not knowing or not being aware, the minute I got into work, I realized that I shift that change. I shift that, you know, this meme mug. I'm walking in, I'm like, hi, you know what I'm saying? And people love that about myself. And I think what I, after, like, you know, as I got to that point of, you know, this beginning of my self-development, it got me, it literally did a whole 360 right back to that person that I was, okay? Literally that whole person that, you know, I questioned, I didn't like, I wasn't aware, I went right back to that person. You know what I'm saying? So it got me to that point of, okay, it's not impossible for you to be nice. It's not impossible for you to walk into a room and, and smile and to ask a person, how was your day? And you have a good day too. And God bless you. And you know what I mean? I, I, I pray it gets better for you. And you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, how is everything? Can I do anything for you? Though it wasn't abnormal for me because the service field that, you know, I'm, 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 I work in the restaurant. So these are questions that I naturally have to ask every single day right and it wasn't when i asked it and believe it or not every server or every bartender do not ask these questions okay you we don't we don't have to but i think for me was what made me want to and i loved it about it was the the expression on, and the impression that i laid on people and that was like it was like that's where i found my my warm it wasn't in the money of course i needed money of course but I, that's when I realized, okay, this is something bigger than me, right? It's not that, okay, well, I'm a good server. You're getting tipped $200 on a $50 bill, boom, bang, bang. No, it's a constant thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant, you know, I'm overly getting tipped or, you know, people want me to work with them or, you know, people literally, I've had people and that's how I know that, again, God is in every one of us. Child, once you realize that, once you acknowledge him, and you start to be honest with yourself, then you, of course, when you start to be honest with him, I feel like it's a catch-22, you know, it's a rolling, it's a rolling effect. You can't be honest with yourself and not be honest with God. So when you start to be honest with, honest with yourself and then be honest with God, it just, play, it just, it's a wild factor. But I think for me, I got to a point where, you know, me, me, like guests looking, I, I've watched guests and, um, in every color, every race. And they look at me and they're like, it's like their face, the, the expression that they leave after I leave a room or I leave their table. It's like, it's this like, who is she? I've had so many people over the years say to me, who are you? What are you do outside of the restaurant? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people ask her, I do you go to college. It's like people want to know. And for me, I always... When, especially when I was younger, I'm like, these people are crazy. Like, I'm just doing my job. Like, why is people doing that? I'm just being myself. But in all actuality, I was being a higher version of myself before I was even there. You understand me? I knew that I exude these things before I even started to, to, to be intentional in my everyday life. So like I said, for me, it got easier when I, when I left, when I realized that I did it in my industry, Okay, so I'm like, okay, well, T, if you do it in your industry, it's not abnormal for you to do it outside of the the workplace, right? And then, then I realized the hardest thing for me is not outside of the workplace. I think the hardest thing for me to, you know, to um, to exude myself or the rooms I'm in, the hardest places for me is around my mother. The hardest places for me is around my family, around my family members sometimes that know me for so long and this impression that they had on me, you get what I'm saying? How how now do I play that into my everyday life without me without me looking or feeling like I'm a fake person or feeling like I'm you know I'm 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 not being myself if that makes sense and then I had to realize that T I was being fake as fuck by pleasing people and not pleasing myself right so a lot of times family members that know me doesn't mean that I'm but a lot of times it's an outlook of what I was taught and that's the that that that's the reason why I was showing up in the way I was showing up at, showing up as but it does not mean that that's who I was period so like I said for me you know as far as you know me finding myself or me being myself I got to a point where I got tired of myself and I think we all have that in us 
I think we have to be to a point of being tired of the bullshit that we feed ourselves sometimes. Tired of, you know, knowing damn well that you really don't like makeup, but then when you're in the room, you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Tired of being something for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And I think, like I said, a lot of times, especially with kids who had, you know, a rough, uh, um, kids who had a rough childhood or, you know, uh, past traumas, those are the people that typically lose their self a lot of times and don't know who they are. Because they never, they never, they never found herself, right? If you, you can't find something if you never even know you lost it. Um, and I think those are the ones that, you know, a lot of times we um, struggle with finding ourselves and finding, you know, how we show up as. And not even sometimes just finding ourselves. I think a lot of times too, what happens is, is we know wholeheartedly who we are, but because of other people's opinion or because of, you know, growing up in a childhood or in a home where, you know, your personality was questioned, was questioned a lot, you can sometimes pull back from the person you know who you, who you are and turn into something or someone else to fit this person. And it's so crazy because, y'all, I really wish that I had time. I'm honest, honestly a bit afraid <laughs> to pull this up. I actually touched my phone because y'all know the drama I be having with, with my phones all the damn time. But I actually, I don't know what it was, but... I'm such a, like, my brain is, my brain yearns for knowledge. And sometimes I be wanting to choke myself. Because it's like, why? But then it's like, I have to. Because, so I study my name. I pulled up my name. My actual name is Tanisia. T-E-N. T-E-N. Girl, can you fuck? Is that your name? T-I-N-E-C-I-A. -E Tanisia is my name. Um, as you know, it's a very distinct name. Mm -hmm. Very distinct. <laughs> but no for real so i pulled up my name y'all i'm i and again i feel like a person who struggles with not struggles with self or just you know who know who they are but you know you like for me i always search i'm i'm a i search oh i i'm always searching okay so i'm always searching i think like i said because you know i'm i've formed i've form and I know this person of who I am but you know it's just certain things that I always I never want to feel like I, I know everything so I pulled up my name um and it's so hard y'all when you know you're following God because you don't want to mess with anything y'all that messes with that you know what I'm saying but I feel like it's certain times you know because God is not in human form he would do things or he would pull up things on the phone, you know what I'm saying, on a street light, I mean, on a, a, a street sign or, you know what I'm saying, on a book, on a, a, a license plate, whatever, just to show you that, listen, I'm here, I got you, I, you know. So I pulled up my name, long story short, I pulled up my name and every single thing in there, y'all, I literally, my daughter, she can tell you, I literally, y'all, I dropped my phone and I started crying. I did, because I'm like, bro, I, I, how do you know this? Every single thing in there, y'all, exude me. Every single thing in, in there exude me. And I feel like one of the most important parts that um, that that touched me was when it said, um, you know, like, um, you you always feel misunderstood. Um, that was like, you know, even when you were a child, you felt that way. And that's when I, that's when I looked, that, that's when I fucking lost it. I'm like, Quit playing with me. You know, it said I'm optimistic. You know, I'm very, very charismatic. I'm flamboyant. Every single thing, y'all, that I use, I've been using these words before time. Like, and every time I read certain things, I'm like, bro, this is, this is me. I'm not making this shit up. This is so me. But, um, yeah, the part red said, you know, like, you know, um, you always, you felt misunderstood or, you know, you feel like it's hard for you to kind of fit into a room, um, um, and you felt like that from you were younger. Y'all, I think I said this. I'm almost positive I made some form of mention on this on one of my episodes. Now, mind you, I just read this thing a couple of days ago. I think it was like two, three, two, three days ago I read it. Literally two, three, two, three days ago. And I'm like, bro, he is speaking. This, um, uh, this is literally my name. Literally every single thing in me is my every single thing in, in there is my name like seriously um if y'all never pulled uh, pull, pull up your name um pulled up your name y'all go ahead and check it out tell me what y'all think about it every you know what i'm saying it it, it it possibly not might mean nothing to you but i feel like it means so much to me and every single thing y'all that i read when it comes down to you know finding out a, a better sense of self it makes sense to me 
period. FYI, I'm just throwing this out here. If nobody ever did a personality test before, go ahead and do yours. Um, I think I did mine with um, Myers Briggs. I did this years ago, y'all. Um, I feel like your personality type or when you know your personality type, it helps you to realize again and to, to know who you are. We are all not the same. We're not who our mothers brought us up to be. God placed and put things in us, y'all, before we even was even thought of being being born, okay? So you have to find your own personality, personality um, type. And then I think what happens too is when you learn your personality type, you also learn the type of people that, you, I'm, I'm not going to say you don't like, but you don't mesh well with, or when certain situations happen, then you realize, um, you realize why you don't, you don't click or you didn't bond with that person. Because whilst I was, whilst I did my task, y'all, and I, you know, did my little research and it said something it said, it said in there, I'm not going to repeat it, but it's something that said in there. And I'm like, that makes so much fucking sense why I didn't like her ass or she just, irritated me it was just certain things that i didn't know why because i'm always around everybody else i was just naturally like hey honey sure you know i'm a, I'm definitely a honey a darling a sweetheart i would sweetheart anybody but when it came down to this one this person in particular it i just could not but after i read you know my personality type i understood why but and then also i realized too not because it says it does not mean that it should it's just put a stamp on it that's just what it is I, and i even feel like that too even when it comes down to your zodiac signs you know people be like oh this is my zodiac sign this is who i am no you have the option to change those right because i feel like it's a lot of things with me and my personality that I'm, I'm i really don't fancy but it does not mean that i'm not going to like judgmental being a judgmental person is a part of my personality type and i'm very much aware of that now and I don't like that. I don't like the fact, like, I'm not in the place to judge nobody. Like, who are you to judge anybody? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's so important, y'all, to learn your personality and know who you, learn your personality. Because once you also learn your personality, it helps you with finding yourself. It helps you with becoming yourself. It helps you with, you know, exuding a better version of yourself, period, right? So I think it's important. I think um, the one I did, the personality type, like I said, was a Myers-Briggs personality test. It's one of the most um, popular ones as well. And I think it has like 16... 16 questions could be more i think it's called it's myers break but it's like a 16 personality thing or whatever so when i pulled that up y'all and i like and i did my test every single thing was like yep that is me um and if you did if you did do your personality test then you would know what this means but i am an i and i am an i and fjt meaning that i am intuitive i am um, judgmental um, I feel a lot and I'm also my personality is like more on a turbulent side of it um, yeah that's not surprising <laughs> but yeah I learned that so for me like I said once I once I learned that and I, I once I learned that I learned the things that I like I learned the things that you know what I'm saying like you know I don't fancy so much you know what I'm saying or things that you know, I'm probably afraid of learning or things that I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of trying, but it does not mean that I don't, I don't put myself in the box. I think when you start to learn yourself, you learn to take your, pull yourself out of this box of who you are. You get what I'm saying? Or who you think you are. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, times, a lot of times we, we use this, you know, this, this glasses or these, um, um, microscope into, or, or, or yeah, a microscope into our past to create our futures which is impossible, right? So for me, it's nothing that my five-year-old self that I would say, you know, I, I, it's nothing from, from 15 years ago should be showing up today. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, the, the my, um, um, what's that word? My morals, I guess you can say, or my core values in so many ways. And even your core values definitely for, should change in 15 years, of course. Um, but as far as who I am, quite frankly, it's, it's two different people. Okay, so that person at 10 is damn sure not that person at 30. That person at 20 is not that person at 30. I am not a, a believer of, you know, when people say, oh, you the same person you was when you was 20 years ago. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like, if you tell me that, I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I ain't changed nothing. Now, I'm all, you know, I feel like, again, certain things, you know, I'm a goofball. I've always been a goofball. That is not going to change. I've learned now how to, I've learned back in the days because I, you know, my, my words can def would, would definitely 
it can it can put a hold into somebody's skin and that was I didn't like that about myself. So I had to learn how to be goofy without, you know, putting other people on the on on my on the front line of, you know, being embarrassed, right? So I think again, it's certain things about yourself that, you know, should definitely stay the same. But those things that, you know, that you naturally don't exude or you 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 don't get you don't like, change it. Change it, change it, change it, change it, change it. Um, and I think a lot of times, too, the reason why we are afraid, a lot of times people are so afraid to change those things in ways because of other people's opinions of, of them or, you know, because of their friends, you know what I'm saying? Because your group of friends do this, you're going to look like the odd one out if you start doing that. Then that means that they're just not your group of friends, baby. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all it means, period. And I know sometimes that can be scary, but once you start... Let me tell you something. Once I got to a point of living in my truth, now when I go on dates, I'm not looking for your, your what's that word, validation of something that I do. You know what I'm saying? If you ask something of what it is that you like, and I talk, oh, well, I like this, and I do this, then I do that, and I do this, and I do that, and I do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it work for you, right? Because at some point, if I'm making it work for you, I'm, not, I'm making it not work for me. And that's not where it's at. The math, that's when the math don't math. Period. Okay? I think it's so important. I feel like it's so important to be who in every single way. I think it's the smallest little things that um that you have to start working on or, or start to be. You know what I'm saying? Like start to be who you if you a person that you know what I'm saying? You like your hair in a ponytail, but you always have it laid down because of other people, because people be like, oh, your hair too big, whatever. Fuck them, bitch. Oh, damn. Okay? Because guess what? Yeah, your head too big and you could also bop the ass right in the face with it too, bitch. Don't play with me. Yeah, period. And what's up? And with my hair in a ponytail, guess what? I know I'm going to give you a full head on, a full headed head butt too because my hair ain't in the way. Period. I don't worry about other people and their opinions. I swear to you. It's nothing I... I'm... I am the... Like, I'm probably not the freest of them all. I'm not that I'm not, but I'm very, very free. I'm a free girl. Like, I'm sorry. I, it's something about me. And I tell people, tell people all the time, I don't care. If you are if you are a friend of mine, then you should know. Okay? When I get into hotels, like, in a on a balcony, I take it loose. And I shake them. And I shake them and I shake them and I shake them and I shake them. And I tell it till I can't shake it no more. Because it's just something about me feeling like... I want to always feel like that, okay? I don't care. I want to feel like I am free in any room that I'm in, period. I want to feel like I am free in every freaking room that I'm in. And if I'm not free in the room, then I'm removing myself. There's no point in being in that motherfucking room. Ain't nobody in that, and ain't nobody in that room that's important enough for me to be in that room. Beyonce could be in that room, bitch. Oh, 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 oh. And I'm moving myself up out up out bitch no i'm not doing that it's not that serious for me i am going to be myself 24 8 okay and if that's an issue for you then bitch to the gate oh you see how i rhymed up ah, period like no i think it's definitely important y'all um being yourself it's definitely important for you to find yourself you know what i'm saying i think again a lot of times in relationship if you if you've been married to a person 15 years and that person's still the same but then you know it's things about yourself you know you damn sure you wasn't even with five years ago you know what i'm saying but then you don't even want to ask or even do too much in the room because now it's going to look so different on you know it's, it's going to look different to your mate because your mate is not used to you showing up in this way this your mate is not used to you doing all these extra shit you get what i'm saying and now you're in a place of okay do i be myself or do i just do what he's used to doing i am not i am not weighing myself out for nobody okay because if i gotta weigh myself i guess where you gonna be Bitch, because I'm off of them. I'm coming off. You're going to be all the way up there by your motherfucking self because I'm not doing this way. It ain't that deep for me. It will never be that deep for me. So, y'all, be yourself. If y'all can't be yourself, baby, get out the room so you can... If, you, if you're not being yourself, find yourself. How do you find yourself? Ask yourself. Question. Simple. What is it that I like to do? Be honest. Simple shit. Do I really like matcha? Mm, no, I just seen that shit. Now, I love matcha, just saying, but, you know what I'm saying? Do I really like matcha? No, I'm really not a matcha person, but I just, you know, on Instagram, I really like that shit, but I really like coffee in real life, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to just drink some fucking coffee. I like matcha. Be honest to yourself. And if you can't be honest to yourself, you damn sure not being honest to nobody else. 
Be true to who you are. Find who you are outside of your kids, outside of your spouse, outside of your family, outside of your friends, outside of your coworkers. Find out what it is that you like. And then when you find out what it is that you like, you don't even know that you're helping other people, people to either be their self or to find themselves as well, period. I've learned that for me, and again, I'm not. Like, I, I love watching other people inspirational women i love watching other women in their bag i love other, i love watching other women exude this level of femininity and softness i love that um and for me i tell people all day long honey if it's something that on, on anybody that i see and i'm like oh and not because it you know the attention that a person is getting but like it's similar to how a person walks and if, if that person just looks like they just naturally like, like I think I told y'all before, the lady um, in the mall, not too far from my house when I went in there and she, listen to me, she, I think she just came from work, wherever she came from, she looked at so, she looked at so class, she, she gave class, okay, and she had like our two shopping bags, a black lady, now she was walking, she was just, it was like she was walking, but she was floating, Okay, now I'm naturally a walking honey. I give I give catwalk. I I was born with a catwalk. I came out the cooch with a catwalk. Okay, my catwalk is like a, you know what I'm saying. I'm not. It was it was like a, you know what I'm saying. Like my catwalk had like a lot of bags holding me back. You know what I'm saying. This lady ain't had a shit hold. She was holding the bags and the bags still ain't had nothing on her. Okay, she was controlling them bitches. Yes. So when I see her and I literally I said to myself this was like two years ago. I'm like bro. I gotta get there. Like that is, I love, I live for that. I live for that. I don't know what it is she's going through. She can have the hardest day of her life. I don't know. But the fact that she's even walking in a sense of even if you if she's going through shit, you don't you don't even know it, that's where I wanna be. Period. And if you see something for somebody else, y'all, we gotta stop hate, we gotta stop using this. Oh, you trying to act like or you copying my child, do it. If fuck it, do it. Okay, if it's something about somebody else that you see and it's going to take you to that next level, you know what I'm saying? You're not copying. I'm not talking about, you know, copying of a person with a red marker with the, and you got the, you copying the whole curse. This and all. No, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking to something that somebody is doing that can be an impact into your life and break generational patterns. Or even hell, just break break you from staying, break you from depression, break you from anxiety. If it's something that some somebody is doing, do it. Do it. Do it. Remember, you not doing it is also a form of you not being yourself. You not doing it is also a form of you allowing other people to control which, what it is that you that, that what it is that you should be doing. And is that what we doing? I don't think so. Hmm. All right, y'all. So there we go. Sum it up, y'all. Be yourself. Find yourself. Love yourself. Okay. And if nobody else told y'all, I love you. Mm -hmm. I do. I love you. Love you. All right, y'all. So we gonna get into oh. We're gonna go ahead and get into a did you know are y'all ready for a did you know y'all this did you know i'm really excited about this did you know y'all because as i was getting ready and i was um actually listening to it i was like i know you motherfucking lying i know you lying mm -mm. okay so did you know remember black history month that's all we giving you february black history all right, so Esther Jones was the real Betty Bob. Did you know that? Did you know Esther Jones was the real Betty Boop? Betty Boop? Betty Bob? I say Betty Bob, y'all. Let's, before I get into this, y'all. I, what I don't like, what I'm not saying I don't like, but what I'm, I'm learning is, you know, me growing up or, you know, me um, spending kind of partial of my life in the Bahamas and partial in the in the US it is beyond me because listen I if you don't know the Bahamas has like a very underlying or British underlying or undertune so a lot of our words and things that we say is very you know from the British colonizers um and then you know me growing up here you know my accent it's just y'all I'll be I'll be my ugh, whatever anyway so like I said, did you know Esther Jones is the original Betty Boop? Is it Betty Boop, Betty Bob? Because I don't, Betty Boop, Betty Boop. It's a real Betty Boop. All right, did y'all know that? If you, and, and for the youngers, the young babes, if y'all don't know who Betty Boop is, y'all go ahead and pull it up. 
Um, Betty Boop was that I literally I used to love Betty Boop. I used to love Betty Boop because you know, if y'all y'all know, like back in the day, she was like the she was the you know the white girl, but she had like the little curvy body with the boobs and stuff. So I like me a little Betty Boop. She was giving sassy. Okay, let me tell y'all why we like the Betty Boop. Y'all ready? Was inspired by a black jazz singer in Harlem. Y'all hear that? Let's go back. Betty Boop cartoon character was inspired by a black jazz singer in Harlem, introduced by Mac Fletcher in 1930s. Jazz age flappies was the first and most famous sex symbol in animation. So Betty Boop is known for, you know, her curvy figure, um, her revealing dress and signature vocal. The Betty Boop that y'all know that little saying she be saying, right? While there has been controversy for years that the cartoon character has been traced back to Esther Jones, known as Baby Esther. Y'all know she copied that shit. I don't even want to read nothing else, baby, because y'all already know Baby Esther. You know that was, Baby Esther, that's a black woman. That's a black woman from the hood. Baby Esther, you know what I'm saying? Um, Trace known as, um, has been trace back to Esther Jones, known as Baby Esther, and perform regularly at a cotton club in the 1920s. Stop. Y'all, every time they say cotton club, whilst I was reading this, I mean, listening to this, I got a little, like my eyes kept like, they used to call it cotton club. Did y'all know that? Let me stop before I get mad. All right. After seeing Esther, after seeing Esther, Helen Kane, a white lady, adopted her style and began using bops in her song as well. Or boops in her song as well. When Betty Boop was introduced, Helen Kane Sue Fletcher stating that they were using her image and style. Don't that sound fucking very familiar to me? Yeah. This shit been going on from the hand of fucking time. Where was I at? However, video video evidence came to light of baby Esther performing in a cotton club, nightclub, and the courts ruled against Kane, you bitch, stating that she did not have exclusive right to the bopping style of an or image and the style effect predated her. Baby Esther, baby style, did little to bring her mainstream fame, but a piece of her lived in Betty Bop. Boop. Whatever. <sighs> Don't that sound about fucking white to you? Yo, this be the bullshit. I, listen, when I started to read that, because I, I listened to it, it was like a, a couple of different like clips I could have went through and read. When I read the one, I said, oh, this is it right here. This is it right motherfucking here. Because don't that, from the 1920s, the 1920s, this shit been going on. We do what they copy. You know what I'm saying? Karen, Karen has been around from the fucking 1920s. She pulled the Karen. Helen Kane pulled the Karen. Oh, um, she using my style. I'm taking her to court. Bitch, what style? What fucking style? What style? And I should have thought about it because, you know, there was like, I was like, <laughs> Betty Boop with a curve and an ass and titties. Stop fucking playing me. Y'all should be, I should have known that. I don't know how I didn't know it, but now I do. There you go. That's the story of um, the fucking did you know. I'm really low-key mad. I get so aggravated, y'all. I get so aggravated when I read these shit. I think, I, I get mad when, I, I, when I'm reading the black history, history, because.
Anyway, <laughs> so let's get into the word of the day. Are you ready? If you don't know, let me tell y'all one more again, okay? When you hear the word of the day, what do you do? What do you do? What's the word of the day? What's so important about it? What's so important about it is when you hear the word of the day, the next thing you do after the word of the day is get on my IG, in my DM. It goes down in the D. M. And make sure you spell that word correctly, okay? Give me the W-O-W -W correctly. You get the word of the day, you get some money in your cash app, okay? You got to be the first person, not the second, not the third. And you go ahead and you have a beautiful and amazing Friday. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do here. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do here. Oh, we had to think about a podcast. All right. All right, you guys. I love you guys so much. It's been an amazing-ass episode, y'all. I've... I'm so happy. I didn't have a lot of cutouts today. The microphone wasn't microphoned today. Well, the microphone microphoned today, which is good. Okay. Thank you, God. Um, I cleaned the house today, y'all. So I'm about to go back and get back into watching Ozark. I'm not even finna lie to y'all, but I'm gonna go ahead and cook. Let me tell you what I have on dinner for tonight, and I'm gonna go ahead and go. So tonight's special, y'all. First off, I'm trying to get away from sides. I'm trying to me personally, I'm trying not to eat sides. I love rice so much but i'm not cooking it so on the um, menu for tonight meal y'all i am cooking oh excuse me y'all i'm doing baby spinach for myself mashed potatoes for my daughter i'm doing a crab stuffed blackened salmon chef's kiss with a bourbon sauce on top of it mm -hmm. a little asparagus yes and what am I making? What, oh, I'm also going to do some, I got these like little snow crabs, the, um, the crab legs, y'all. And I think I'm going to fry those. And I know y'all like, damn, we was doing so good. You going to fry some shit? Yes. I'm going to fry crabs. I'm only going to eat one leg. I promise y'all that's it. I'm going to give the rest to my daughter. So that's what we cooking tonight. Mm -hmm. Y'all, my man going to love it here, honey. He going to love it. She like, that. he going to be like, damn, boy, that's that baby right there. Period. She cooks, clean, a baddie you know what I'm saying? An entrepreneur, a worker, a mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that girl. Fuck you talking about. Period. Anyway. <laughs> it be the... Y'all know, I feel like after four, five, six, that's why I'm not a big drinker, y'all, because I do not drink. It just ain't in me. But I love a good wine. So, after about five, six, six, out of there. How we going? I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't know how I be focusing. I do not know. Mm -mm. I don't know how people do it. Like, how do y'all be drinking and trying to have serious conversations? I can't do it, baby. I be out of there. I just be hoping and praying that when it's time for me to edit, that this shit be giving something. Because y'all, like I said, after that fifth sip, my brain dipped. Okay, <laughs> I love you guys so much. You're All right, guys, you already know what it is. It is your girl, Nisi, from The Think About a Podcast. Don't you forget to tell the sister, cousin, brother, uncle, auntie, niece, nephew, great, great cousin from your great, great, great sister side. That ain't it, because you don't have a great, great sister. Who the fuck have a great sister? Run it back. You already know what it is. It is your girl, Nisi, from The Think About a Podcast. Don't you forget to tell the sister, cousin, brother, auntie, uncle, niece, nephew, great, great, great grand uncle from your brother's side. This is the thing about a podcast. We out!